The introduction of disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, especially the biologic agents, has significantly improved rheumatoid arthritis treatment. But better predictors of treatment response in individual patients are needed to assist in clinical decision making. Anti-citrullinated protein antibodies, or ACPA, are sensitive and highly specific markers of rheumatoid arthritis and have recently been incorporated into the ACR ULAR diagnostic criteria. We know that 70 to 80 percent of RA patients are ACPA positive, but we don't yet understand how ACPA correlate with response to therapy. Anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide type 2, or anti-CCP2 antibodies are recognized as a surrogate marker for ACPA. In this analysis from data from the AMPLE study, we examined whether baseline anti-CCP2 status, that is, whether a patient was positive or negative, and anti-CCP2 concentration correlated with clinical outcomes following treatment with abatacept or adalimumab. AMPLE was a two-year phase 3b head-to-head -head study that established the non-inferiority of subcutaneous abatacept versus adalimumab in patients who are biologic naive and methotrexate inadequate responders. In the present analysis, blood samples collected at baseline were analyzed by ELISA for anti-CCP2 antibody status and concentration. Positive patients were divided into equal quartiles based on baseline anti-CCP2 concentration, quartile 1 being the lowest and quartile 4 being the highest concentration. Study outcomes by baseline quartile and status were assessed up to year two, and statistical analysis included all randomized and treated patients, and changes from baseline between treatment groups were compared using analysis of covariance adjusting for baseline values. Baseline serum samples were available for 508 randomized patients, of whom 76.4% were anti-CCP2 positive. There were 97 patients per quartile, and the number of patients per treatment group were similar across quartiles. No consistent differences in baseline characteristics were seen across anti-CCP2 quartiles or treatment groups. In both treatment groups, the effect on disease activity was lower in anti-CCP2 negative than positive patients, although results were still clinically meaningful. When baseline anti-CCP2 concentration was considered, the improvement at year two achieved with abatacept was significantly greater in patients with the highest concentration quartile, that is quartile four versus lower quartiles. This effect of anti-CCP2 concentration on treatment efficacy was not observed with adalimumab. When comparing quartile four of each treatment group, there was a non-significant trend in favor of abatacept. The effect of treatment on disability were consistent with those seen on disease activity. We again observed better responses in patients with the highest quartile versus lower quartiles for abatacept, whereas anti-CCP2 quartile did not influence adalimumab efficacy. Similarly, in both treatment groups, the percentage of patients receiving remission, c remission, s remission, or a DAS28 less than 2.6 was higher in the CCP-positive than CCP2-negative groups. With respect to anti-CCP2 concentration, the higher percentage of patients in quartile 4 achieved remission with abatacept compared with those in the lower quartiles. Remission rates with adalimumab were consistent across quartiles. Overall, remissions tended to be higher at year 2 than year 1 regardless of treatment and CCP2 status or concentration. At year 2, remission rates were highest in abatacept quartile 4 group. In this exploratory analysis from the AMPLE study, we found the treatment effects for both abatacept and adalimumab were greater in patients who were anti-CCP2 positive at baseline than in those who were negative. In addition, higher baseline anti-CCP2 concentration correlated with greater efficacy with abatacept, but not with adalimumab. Our results provide some valuable insight into how ACPA status and concentration may influence response to therapy. However, further studies are needed to understand the immunologic mechanism underpinning these observations and before the prognostic and predictive value of ACPA can be used to inform treatment decision making in the clinic. I'd like to thank the patients and the investigators of this study, the study sponsors Bristol-Myers Squibb, as well as the team at Codex for this presentation.